Hello everyone. Today we're in Frederick, Maryland, uh, right across the street from the Frederick Municipal Airport. And there's Bear. He's gonna make sure he waters that tree over there really nicely. But we're right across from the Frederick Municipal Airport at Dragon Distillery. So uh, today, Bear and some friends are uh, here at Dragon Distillery to uh, have a little visit, uh, to sample a couple of their wares, and uh, just uh, enjoy ourselves. Uh, Bear has been here before, so he knows where he's going. So he's gonna go walk right up to the door on his own, I think. Uh, but uh, it's very important. So uh, the distillery is part of an industrial complex and it's on the airport side of the building. So you come in through the parking lot here, park anywhere, and that is the main entrance right there, right under the, the logo for Dragon Distillery. So we're waiting for a couple of other folks to arrive and then we're gonna walk into the distillery and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get to see the back area and uh, maybe sample a few things. But uh, anyway, we're gonna pause for now and uh, I'll talk to you again in a little while. All right, everyone, here we go. We're gonna go inside. There's Bear, he's on his leash this time. And there's Mike. Hi, Mike. And uh, we're still waiting on Eddie and Zach to, to get here, but they should be here shortly. Okay, buddy. Okay, come on. All right, and here we go. Here's the main entrance, Dragon Distillery. All right, I'm gonna pick Bear up and we'll walk on in. Hi, is that a service animal? He is, yes, sir. Do you have a documentation for him? I do, yes, sir. This will be his uh, second visit here, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> How are you today, sir? How are you? Do you have a reservation? Good. We do. What's the name? Uh, Christensen. Christensen? Yes, sir. Uh, under Tanya? Yes. For four of us. For four of us, yes, sir. Very good. And this is the uh, tasting room slash uh, shop for the, uh, for the distillery. And over here is the full bar slash tasting room slash everything else so we're gonna take a we're gonna take a pause here and wait for everybody else <laughs> all right so uh everybody is finally here so we have uh bear our leader uh in his seat uh we've got eddie on the uh, right we've got mike in the middle and we've got zach on the end so uh everybody's here we're uh we're trying the three whiskeys that they have currently the snallygaster the basilisk and the uh the dog, double dog rye. And uh, once we're done uh, sampling the whiskey and have a few minutes, we're actually gonna go back inside the distillery and take a look around. So um, anyway, that's about it for now. So cheers, everybody. <laughs> All right, and here we go. Right behind you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so those are the, uh, those are the uh, barrels that we're gonna be doing, correct? Those are the 10 liters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are the, the size of the 10 liter barrels. Uh, if you do a barrel, this, this is great. So we're actually going to be doing one for the club and one for Blue Hill Tavern. So uh, the barrel is going to be filled with, uh, with a make and then it's going to age for a period of time from six to, to, to two years, depending on how long we want to let it go. And then uh, everything's going to get bottled out of that. And then we're going to do that as uh, part of one of our casings uh, as part of the club. So, Kind of cool, and then we get to keep the barrels afterwards. So Blue Hill Tavern will get one, and I get the other one. Sorry, guys, because I'm putting up the funds for it. But anyway, uh, here we are, and I'm sorry, your name was? I'm Nate. Nate? I'm the musician of the cellar here. Nate, pleasure to meet you. Nice uh, this is Bear. Hi, so Bear, Bear of b and uh, you know, He's the B in b and uh, Bear French Whiskey uh, Society. Uh, this is Zach, this is Eddie, and this is Mike. Nice to meet you. Um, thank, thank you very much for, uh, for walking us back here today. We really it's appreciate it. We're excited. So have you all been to Mangus Uh Beer may have been to a few. Uh, a few in Kentucky, and a few in Virginia, and a few in Maryland. Uh, but not this one, except uh, it was in the tasting room last time. Okay. Well, we have a pretty standard setup. So first we have still, a 520 gallon still, 2,000 liters. It has two pots and two columns that we can all run in different configurations depending on what kind of spirit we're, make, we're making. Um, power power that still is our boiler, which makes all the hot steam, so this is completely steam powered. Uh, steam is useful because it uh, provides a, a nice uh, distribution of heat and it um, is just low maintenance for us. 
Now, is that a copper still or? So all stills have some amount of copper just so it can react with certain things called sulfites, which are byproducts that are made during the fermentation process. Um, you'll see some stills that are made completely out of copper. Um, we have specific parts and internal pieces that are made out of copper. So it achieves the same thing. But um, most of our stills made out of stainless steel, which is cheaper and easier to clean. Yeah, especially for, for the outside. So I've seen like Sagamore Distillery, they have that huge uh, copper, copper um, sorry, the name of the? The column. The column. They have a huge copper column, but mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter because the outside of the, the outside being copper doesn't really matter because it's not actually touching the whiskey exactly. or the distillate in any way, shape, or form. It's it's got a nice aesthetic. It's pretty, but it is it is very pretty. But this is very pretty too. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, they look like uh, divers' helmets uh, yes. on top of the on top of the stills. And the owners have threatened to put me in there so I can clean it myself someday. But we haven't, <laughs> we haven't done that yet. <laughs> so before we get to the still, uh, we start here. This is our mixer. Uh, this is where we mix our corn and sugars and whatever our bases. Um, we will add in different enzymes and let that heat so it cooks all the sugars that are in whatever we're doing, usually corn, and the sugars will come out into solution. We'll then transfer the mash into one of these two fermenters. And then we'll let it cool down for a little bit until it's the right temperature and then we add our yeast. And the yeast does most of the work for us. Um, usually it'll take around a week and the yeast will consume sugars, make carbon dioxide, which will just uh, walk away harmlessly. And it'll make uh, ethanol, which is the alcohol that we actually care about. Now, is it a special a special yeast of, of some type? So or? our yeast is special designed so it will work at a higher temperature, so we'll have a longer range of action. Um, um, it's the same process for most alcohol making wines and beers. The only difference is that for wines and beers, usually their final product ends around here. We have a bit more to do, so we can be a little um, uh, lax with some of our uh, things. The yeast we use is not ideal for the final taste here because we're making a crappy sour beer that tastes like corn. Uh, okay. For beer makers, this is a final product, so they have to be very particular about their yeast. We don't care. Got it. Now, you guys do a lot of uh, collaborations with Flying Dog. Yes. Uh, the rye mm -hmm. and the, most recently, I think I bought the last six bottles of the oat. Mm -hmm. um, now, is that come in as make, does that come in and that's already the make and then goes into fermentation or how so does that work? Usually we'll get a mash that's, that they made up already, so we'll just put it straight into the fermenters. Straight in the fermenters, okay. Occasionally we might have some base, but it all depends on what we're doing. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so after the fermentation, we'll transfer it back into the still. Um, when it's in the still, the mash will evaporate in those uh, big drums you see on either side. And then the vapor will travel into the two bubbles, and then it'll go into one of those two columns. Um, the columns is where the actual distillation process works, and then it'll come out of the spigot that you see out front, and we'll get our product. At that point, it's a neutral sphere, typically. And then we have to either filter it, flavor it, or put it into a barrel for the aging process. Now, what do you do with the heads and the tails? Do you the, filter them back in, or? So the, so the heads are toxic, so um, everyone usually discards them in some way. We collect them so that we can donate them to local uh, battle diesel companies, or um, oil fuel companies, and they'll do something with them. Okay. We don't know, but we just make sure that we keep it for them and they can use it. Oh, awesome. Um, the tails, which is the low proof end of a distillation run, larger stills will, or larger distillers will typically collect them and reuse it in later distillations. Uh, because we're at a premium for space, we don't do that, we just discard them. Okay. It's not uh, worth it to us to keep them going. Okay, gotcha. Fantastic. And I see some barrels sitting over here. Do you have something aging here in the warehouse or uh, are those used for temporary storage? So that wall you see is actually all empty barrels. Okay. Um, we're gonna keep those for either sell them to people who want to like craft with them or use them for their own aging processes. Um, and then some of them are actually full where uh, we're just waiting for a couple more months or years possibly to know what we're doing. So those are all our aging products. Now, are they logoed on the other side with the Dragon Distillery logo, or? Yeah, they, uh, you can't see them, but on the other side, they're all stamped with a uh, brand. Oh, very nice. And how much, uh, and actually, so some people are interested in empty barrels. How much are you selling the empty barrels for? Uh, it depends on the barrel. It depends on the barrel, okay. Uh, the quality and, and where it is in the process. Yeah. Now, have you guys done any collaborations with uh, Flying Dog going back the other way? Were Flying Dog's actually aging their stuff in a whiskey barrel? No, I'm not entirely sure about that. Okay, because I know several several breweries have done that recently and created kind of a, a whiskey kind of flavored or styled uh, a beer. Mm -hmm. So I know uh, you know the big guys like Guinness uh, in in their uh, distillery in in Baltimore here will do that on a regular basis. They like using a rye barrel mm -hmm. because it adds a, a nice spice uh, to the 
to the original uh, blend that they've got in there of whatever blonde yeah. uh, beer or whatever. We have done uh, collabs like that with uh, local breweries in the past, but we haven't done many. Okay, got it, got it. Awesome. You guys have some great space. Now, um, is the space in the back also yours? Yes. Or? So, originally we just had this space and then we opened up into the den that you were in. And the yeah, that front space is fantastic. And then you, that's mostly storage and bottling? So that's mostly storage and that's where we make our canned cocktails and we pre-mix our base. Oh, fantastic. Maybe, maybe we just take a quick picture back there? Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I, I noticed the can. So, do you have a canning machine or? Oh, we just got one. Oh, that's awesome. Pretty funny. And unfortunately, it's very messy. But oh, that's messy. okay. So where you, where you keep everything that needs to be refrigerated yep. and then your, your bottling slash canning. Yeah. In there is a giant bright tank that we use to, to compress and mix our Oh, cocktails. fantastic, fantastic. So uh, you're doing barrel-aged cocktails. What type of cocktails? Uh, so currently, uh, we don't do any barrel-aged cocktails. Oh, okay. Oh, we just do pre-made cocktails. Like vodka, yeah. pre-made pre pre vodka cocktails? Most of our, our, our pre-made cocktails are vodka-based. We have one gin and one bourbon-based. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for having us today. No really appreciate it. And you guys are fantastic. You've done some great work. We thank really appreciate much. what you're doing. Thank you so much.